It is another edition of Hoops Adjacent on the Athletic NBA show. David Aldridge in Chicago for the lottery. We are taping this on Tuesday. We do not know where Victor Wembanyama is going. My man Marcus Thompson gaming, gutting it out. Sick, but still gutting it out in the Bay. And all the way across the pond, where it's five hours later than East Coast time, our man Bastion from Trash Talk. The only guy I wanted to have on to talk about Wemby, the day of the lottery. Bastion, thank you for jumping in, my man. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation again. Always a pleasure to talk basketball with you guys. Dude, dude. This, are you this hype crazy. or what? Are you are you right. excited? It's it's <laughs> it's a it's a mix. It's hype. It's you're tired as hell because it's covering for so long, so many months. Yeah. Now it's coming, and and the playoffs are until seven in the morning in France. So when you pile up all those days, sometimes it's 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 uh, it's crazy, but it's definitely hype for tonight, man. Man, it's got to be crazy. So the actual lottery is at eight Eastern. So what's that's two in was that three in the morning or two in the morning your time? That's sweet two in the morning <laughs> with with coffee and then croissant and everything's fine. After oh that. my god, dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. But uh, no, everybody's going to be up. Everybody who loves basketball, I know, will yeah. be up for this. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. So, man, we we haven't talked to you in a few months. Obviously, yeah. we you know, when we talked to you the last time, he was just starting the season with Metropolitans. Season, I think, ended yesterday, right? That was the last regular season game for them? I mean, uh, right now, he's playing. That's the last game is right now, as we speak. That's right now. Okay. Uh, okay. And then it's the playoffs. And then the playoffs. So, he averaged a double-double for the season, 21 and 10 putting up stupid numbers and it's just nice. Not even the numbers. Forget the numbers. It's just, yeah. just him. So like, so you've seen him now for the full season for, with a team that really was uh, willing to help him get ready for the NBA and do the things that, that he needed to get ready for the NBA. How do you think he got through the year? I think it went well, uh, knowing what happened the year before with uh, Tony Parker's old team uh, as well. Uh, um, yeah. This was the project. I think something that, that Buna and Diaz agent said was uh, the teams are not going to fit. Uh, he's not going to fit to the team. The teams are going to fit to him. So yeah. the project was to make sure that he had the right uh, personnel around him, the right coach, Vincent Collet, the right players. And I think he faced some up, there, up and downs. And you could see that this is not only, as we talked uh, earlier on our part one, I would say, <laughs> uh, it's not only a, a physical phenomenon or a shooting or a technical phenomenon. It's the it's the mindset. Yeah. So when he had a little bit of a down, uh, he understood what was going on and he didn't force anything and he tried to let the game come to him. So I think overall it's a success. Uh, now there's scales to this. It's not yeah. Luka Doncic type of success in Europe. But for his size and for the the hype, I think it it was a a, a good season overall. Was there at all any signs that this pending life changing moment had any impact on his season, uh, or was he able to just kind of fully block that out? Totally focus. That's that's the thing that 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 really intrigued me the most. Is you could see the hype. Uh, we were all waiting for the. Moments where he showed a little bit of being 18, like yeah. uh, right to the, the Vegas games in October. But it didn't really come. I, I think uh, the only moments were when, I would say in December, guys were playing more physical. And um, he had a, a few moments where it was, I think I, I, I DM'd Dio about this. Uh, he had a, little, a few, uh, what I would call Michael Porter Jr., type of adventure which is i'm gonna stay out of all this outside and not go inside and then i think he realized that he's like seven four <laughs> and he started to demolish Damn, i'm big <laughs> yeah yeah and and, and that clicks and uh, he never went into um a fight or an arguments or anything that went as you guys call it tmz moments he's just absolutely locked in focus because he knew what was at hand so uh, it was a really smooth ride. Uh, the 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 less smoother ride was more on the media side because we didn't know what we were getting. What we were getting, but on the courts, uh, I I don't think there was a moment where I was like, oh, that's that's a warning sign, man. Yeah. So, so I, how did how you know Clay is one of the great coaches of all time. He obviously understood the assignment, right? So like, what what he was yeah. supposed to do this year. Did was there ever a time where 
the other guys on the team were not cool with what was obviously a showcase for one guy all season. I haven't I haven't been that up close to to know this. I had some guys from the team who were on a daily basis with the team trying to figure out the relationship and everything. But uh, I mean, it's more guys being in awe more than anything uh, when you see that. I mean, it's previous teammates from as well and and current teammates. Yeah. who know that their be- best chance to win is to feed him the ball. It's not that he's putting up numbers and they're like at the bottom of the standings. They're like, I think, I think top three, top two. Right. So um, they knew that he was the, he was the the main force. And uh, I think it was the contrary. Like, I don't know if you saw the phenomenon, but there was a, there was a guy um, uh, from the team. He had a funny like last name. I don't know what, what it was, but he got more hype than uh, than other guys because it, they they get more exposure because of this. So I think it's more positive than uh, than anything. What's the? I mean, is there? A, oh, go sorry, ahead. Was, is no good. Is is there like a you know in America like it's a big deal to be there with the commissioner, you know, family green room and all that stuff. Is is that not was that a tough decision on, on his? As far as that, not a big deal internationally to be, you know, uh, a part of those festivities or play. I mean, uh, playoffs are obviously pretty important, right? So, how, how did that? How did that decision go about? Uh, you mean to to attend the draft? Or uh, sorry, I didn't understand. What was it? The the decision on yeah what? To, to to attend the draft to, you know, the whole pomps and circumstance of it all. Oh, that's that's a part of the business. Uh, he's business, so I think he knows that that he has to take part in all this. And uh, yeah, there's there are those questions about the the end of the playoffs and, and the dates with with all the the hoopla and the drafts. But um, the job is to be in the NBA. I mean, uh, obviously he wants to be good to to finish the season strong, but um the 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 ultimate goal remains to be in the nba and if it has to go through these phases and you have to cross those boxes he's gonna do them he's not gonna that that's what was said really early on by buna right after vegas where people were like "Ooh, he might be shut down or guys might keep him out because of the skills and the the size and everything in the body but buna said straight up He's going to play. He's going to take part in all of this. He doesn't want to be, uh, he doesn't want to have some kind of advantage because of the other, uh, compared to the others. He wants to go the same way as others. And that's what was explained, I think, in the last few profiles that were published recently. It was that guy really appreciates that he was doing the same drills as the guards. He was doing the same things, had the same standards. He didn't have, like, I don't know how you call this, but, like, yeah, advantages. I don't know, it's the yeah. treatment, special treatment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't get any of this, and that's that's what I think he he he's that, he's that touted as a prospect. Um, the, the I remember just the, the, the guy with the funny last name is uh, Steve O.U. Fats. I don't know if you heard about this guy. <laughs> Is that how you say it? OU? Yeah, yeah. I think it's Steve OU Fat. I'll, I'll check it out, but I think it was one of his teammates. That's really his last name. Yeah, so yeah, the Fett. H is silent. That's important in our culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, oh, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, right. I'm not going to go this way. This is on you, Marcus. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, that hurts. So, so man. So, uh, hold, hold, let yeah, me ask you one more question. Right. Real quick. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Bastion, I need you to be honest with us because, look, you, you're a member of the media. And you know it's all about us, right? Uh, <laughs> our our plights and our successes. How wrapped up are you, and where uh, uh, Wimby ends up landing? Because uh, that's going to significantly impact your life, right? Like, I figure you're going to spend a lot of time wherever <laughs> he ends up. Do you have a favorite here? I mean, I like East Coast because the games are earlier. So uh, if I have to talk media-wise, I know it's more exposure by people watching more games. You guys know the drill with the media. More people watching the games, more more everything. More readers, more retweets, more everything. So that's my personal um, preference. I I want to see this. I know a lot of guys want to see like Portland or all this. Washington, baby! (laughs) D.C.! I, I have I have a few favorites. I think fit wise, a lot of people want to want to see him in Indiana because of the whole Tyrese Albert and Rick yeah. Kyle stuff. 
you want a point guard that can fit him the ball. You want a championship coach. That's it. And you're far from all the hype from the big cities. So that's cool. I want to go Charlotte. I want to go Lamelo and and Wemby. I want to see how it goes. I want to okay. see what it changes with the with the owners and everything. And so uh, these are some of my favorites. But um, but I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not dropping any bomb in here. But I wouldn't be surprised if anything doesn't go according to plan after a few years. I mean, one, two. I wouldn't be surprised if that guy, that talented. Would be pushed by Buna and everything to ask for a trade. That guy is so good. He's not going to let... The, you guys know the NBA more than me. There's a lot of randomness by the drafts. You guys, Sometimes you end up in a situation where you're like, damn, I, I didn't want to. They're not going to yes. let... They're not going to let the... the they're not going to they're not gonna let, let random things affect a guy so talented. I don't think so. You know... I, you didn't one say guy, San Antonio, DA. No, Come I know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys have any favorites? Draw, river walk, baby. <laughs> you know what I was fascinated by, and I'm not saying it's going to work. I just wonder how they would try to make it work. Is if he wound up with Dallas and Luca, like, yeah, but that I don't, that could, uh, nah. yeah, that wouldn't know. work, right? <laughs> I kind of don't think it would work. They both need the ball, right? Oh, they're going to turn him into uh, Miles Turner, and I have just nightmares out of this. I, I don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> I kind um, of figured that was that would you not guys, you, you guys have favorites for this lottery? Like you think who's gonna go one? You mean in terms in terms of where he should go? Yeah, yeah. Fit. Um I'm fa- I think Detroit would be very interesting. It's a very young team, but they do have some talent. They do have a very young point guard in, in Kate Cunningham, but he's real he can be really good. Oh, you know, yeah. and they've got some interesting pieces like Duran and some of their other young guys. Um, they, it would be really, yeah, it would be a really young team. I don't know if he needs vets. I think most young guys could use some vets around them. Um, but that's one team I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to see if that could work. You mentioned Portland. I think a lot of people in the States would love to see him with dame just because the the possibilities are so crazy um and people have a soft spot for dame people want dame to be on a good team because he's just such a good player um you mentioned indiana as well with, with halliburton certainly that could that could be interesting that could be very interesting um together uh those are the team orlando would be i'd be fascinated by orlando if he wound up there because I think Orlando's getting pretty close to being good. You know, their young guys are really coming on. And I don't know if it would be – like, you'd make it work. I get, I understand that. Like, wherever he goes, the team's going to make it work. But I wonder who, how they would handle having him and Bancaro and Markel. You know, there's a oh, lot, yeah. of, lot of mouths need to get fed, you know, for that to work. And somebody would have to take a back seat. I'm not so sure, sure that would happen, but from the talent standpoint, if he went to that team with that talent, whoo, Lord, they could be good. Real, they could be good next year. Marcus, you got any yeah, favorites? Orlando's my favorite. Orlando yeah. is my favorite. I actually wouldn't mind him in Houston, but you know me, man. I'm from Oakland. I want to see Dame, so put him in Portland. Let's go. <laughs> Give Dame somebody. But you guys are not scared <laughs> about the whole uh, Sam Bowie, Greg Oden uh, trifecta. No. <laughs> like, no. We don't want to That's, see that. I mean, there's some, it, it does seem to be where big men go to die figuratively, right? So, I mean, that has happened. Every guy of substance that's gone there the last, it, it, yes, it's happened. Um, but I don't, I don't believe in stuff like jinxes and things like that. I don't that. think they can handle or shoot like him. So it's all good. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So after this, uh, the season, like, all right, what, what is still the question mark for you in terms of making the adjustment to the NBA for him? Well, um, who's going to be around him? I, I don't think I don't see any issues with him personally. I think my my biggest question mark for the summer is first, um, is he going to go to the summer league? And if he does, is it on that type of stuff where he goes like one game, shows out, and then boom, that's it, right, not playing anymore. So uh what were you saying? Yeah, no, that's pretty much what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's what's gonna happen. So it's more summer league. Um then 
we know we have the the world championship uh in september right. so we cannot wait to see him with the french uniform then uh it's more like how is he going to fit with the guys around him because i think he's easy to 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 play with but um how is going to how is it going to be on his franchise like are they going to be really like from day one they're going to give him the keys that's that's the the part that intrigues me the most because about him i don't he speaks english well uh, he's easy going uh, he's perfectly fine physically skills wise it's okay he just has to do the whole summer league and french national team uh, stuff but apart from this I mean, it's we just want to know where we're gonna be on opening night because that's that's the only question mark that I have right right now. And I I try not to be. We talked about this in January. I try not to be too hyped, but it's the country. He's just calming everything down because he doesn't give you that many points of curiosity or, and I wouldn't say curiosity of of being in, uh, really um, pessimistic. I would say so. But do you do you guys have some stuff like you you're thinking, oh, that I don't know if he can or he can't. Well, in the NBA market, you can you always start with who does he guard. That's the first thing everybody in the NBA for anybody coming into the league wants to know who does this player guard tonight because you got to guard somebody in the NBA. <clears throat> and that's my question: is who does he guard? Does he guard fours? Does he guard fives? Does he, you know, he's got to guard with somebody, you know, so yeah, you can, you can put him in drop coverage and hide him a little bit, but at some point, good teams put you in pick and rolls and you got to guard somebody. You got to be able to switch or guard somebody. I'm not saying he can't. I, that's just the question I have about him is who does he guard night in and night out? Yeah. I mean, mine is minutes. more centered. Mine is more centered on like, I, I just believe in the value of veterans and, He's about to experience a life that just not that many players experience. I mean, he's – I mean, I was just watching The Last Dance, right, <laughs> just thinking about how how big the NBA has gotten and the whirlwind around him and often the difference between making it and not – and not even really making it, but just how easy the road is, how hard it is, it has to do with what vets you got around you. Who do you have who you can trust? Who's giving you the game? And because everything he do, everything he does will be center stage spotlight. Like, I mean, we're looking at that job all right. Not to say he's anything close to that, but we see what happens when you just don't have the OG with you. So to me, that that's going to be a big deal. Who's the coach and who's the veterans? Does he have somebody who can protect him from stuff, who can show him the ropes? Like, cause all that stuff matters when you're building a career because especially for him, like for most guys, it's not just right. basketball. But for him, it definitely ain't going to be just basketball. It's going right. to be handling all the other stuff, which is why I feel like San Antonio might be a good spot. Just because they ain't. I think <laughs> it would like be a be great. Amount. No, it would be a great and spot. You got pop. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No, it would be a great but, spot. I mean, Bastion, it won't be a great, it won't be a great spot for you, though. I mean, you, <laughs> but you, won't, you won't have a Why are you hating on there. San Antonio, Mark? Nah. I was, I was just saying is you know I, I, want, I want to be able to kick it you know I want you to, I want you to have a good time too. There's some know? spots in the tone, man. There's some spots in the tone. You could have a nice yeah, glass of wine. You. I hear you. <laughs> no, but I think I think da to 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 bounce on on what you just said with Marcus. I think the whole I get the whole veteran thing, and, and I agree because you you see those teams that are totally. Uh, discombobulated when they don't have veterans shout out to my rockets exactly um, that's why i'm not sure that would be a good spot for him yeah even you with the email okay i don't i don't believe so but the the defensive part is in, interesting i think it's it's overall uh, we all have these debates in france where like we think he's going to start as a four we wouldn't we wouldn't be surprised if he starts as a four uh, with a with a really like a, a really muscular five who does all the dirty work that would be the ideal ideal uh, pairing to me, but really really soon people are gonna realize you can play him four you can play him five sometimes he's gonna spot up at three I don't know I think he's gonna be a four mixed with a five and he can defend really in the perimeter and inside but. People are gonna be like, "Oh, he's playing MB tonight." So, um, or Jokic, when when he's gonna be big, muscular guys. I think this is when the first slander is gonna come. Like, do you see? He cannot get the bumps and bruises and everything from the ABA. 
And we're all going to have to be like, dude, he's 19, just give him some time. But exactly. this is going to be just the usual. Yeah. I mean, if he can get up to, was he like 220 now? Something like this. If he gets up to, I mean, he could prop. I mean, he's not going to get up to 270. But if he could hold like 235, 240. He can get to 250. Yeah, he could be. He'd be twenty eight, two fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd give be him, give him a good ten years. He'd be yeah, yeah. He's gonna he's gonna follow the the KD uh, roadmap, not the yeah. Giannis. Yeah, I he's mean, he, this. he's like to me, he's like KG. Not you know, in terms of body size, I think he can be kind of a wiry, strong guy, but not not a big banger. You know, he's not going to be that, but he'd be strong enough to hold his own in the paint. I mean, he's like to me, Marcus. I don't know if you agree. He's like Evan Mobley to me. He's just taller, you know, like, and yeah. Evan Mobley's fine. You know, like he can guard, he guards fours very well. He was, you know, all defensive team. So I think he'll be fine. It's just, and there'll be nights where he physically, there's just guys that are just bigger than him. And those will be, those could be tough nights for him, but the tough nights for everybody, you know, like Jokic is a low for everybody. Shit. It's not, you know, like, it's not like, not like there's 10 guys in the league that can guard Jokic. There's like maybe one. Maybe AD, and that's the only one, you know. So he's shit. He's a matchup problem for everybody. So he should be fine. Where so where where physically will you watch the lottery tonight? So this is what we call the uh, official couch uh, in my flat. So basically, <laughs> we do when when we do the draft lottery, the trade deadline, and the draft and free agency. We do live shows from like for free agency. It's from midnight to three in the morning, or for the draft, it's from one to five because we do the first run. Sometimes we do the second. Passion, man. Um, but so yeah, we 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 stay on the couch, and I got Alex who's doing most of the shows with me. We got the camera rolling, welcoming everyone on Twitch, and just uh, we probably do a preview from like one thirty to two. Uh, and then at two uh, is the start of the, the lottery. And then we just do a little the briefing of uh, analysis of, of the results. Because it's, I mean, it's obviously in France, we're waiting for the whole Wembanium, I think. But Jesus, there are some stuff tonight about the Mavericks who have to protect their picks and Orlando with the Chicago Bull pick and all this. So right. there's there's a whole lot to 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 digest from, from tonight. So we're going to be live, at I think, for like an hour from like 1.30 to 2.30. And then when you think we have to go to sleep, Lakers Nuggets. <laughs> right, game right, one. right, right, right. So we have to wait, work, work until five five thirty in the morning, just the usual. Hey, you mentioned before the Olympic team. Do they have any um, clarity on Embiid yet? No, I think the last news came up like a, a few weeks ago. I would say two weeks ago. Um, Joel is getting married this uh, summer. Uh, so I think the schedule is clear that uh, in regards to the world championship, he's not going to be with the French national team. Okay. But I think it's progressing and the goal is still the same, uh, is to be there for the Olympics uh, in 14 months. And I think Joel wants to be there and the staff is doing its maximum to make sure that everything is according to plan. But it's it's uh, I I think there's going to be a lot of silence for this summer because of the whole wedding and just what happened with the Sixers and everything. Yeah, we don't yeah. you don't want to put too much sauce into this. So I think Embiid everything is going to come back around autumn, like sub September October, and then they're going to have to prepare the group for for Paris 2024. Yeah, who's do they have who is who are the locks for the World Championship team? Who's definitely playing this summer? Oh, I think Nick, Nick Batum is going to be there. I think some guys are going to come back. I, I'm pretty sure Evan had a tough year. Evan Fournier had a tough year with the Knicks, but he's one of the locks. Yeah, he's a, cor uh, he's we'll a cornerstone see. guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll see with some other guys because I, I think you probably remember the great highlights of Nando the Colo with the Raptors or the yeah, Spurs. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> I remember Nando, but, sure. But he, but he killed it in Europe. Uh, so he's one of the main guys as well. Uh, Thomas Hurtel, who was one of the killers uh, a few years ago against Spain. I mean, it's a, it's a mix between all the new generation. We don't know about Frank Nielakina. Some some guys are going to come back yeah. from the same team because Vincent Collet wants to have the same group with the continuity. Uh, the guys who beat Team USA in World right. Championship, I think it's 19. Yeah. Um, so some of those guys, some names that you've heard of, like Vincent Poirier or Gershon Yabuzele. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those guys, them boys are going to be back. And and then we just have a question mark about Rudy. Yeah. 
it, it got a little bit into an argument uh, last few weeks in France because he said he didn't know yet. But um, we'll see. He, he's been there the last few years, so if he needs a break, fine for him. What did what did you guys make of Rudy's season in Minnesota? Because the... <laughs> Over here, it was like that was a disaster. That was yeah, horrible. yeah. It was it was tough. I, I think we saw it in two parts. Uh, the first part was, oh wow, the hype is incredible before the season, uh, and we wanted to see that team. And then Cat got injured; it got really difficult. And yet he found his rhythm because he was. He said he was really tired about the whole. Uh, European basketball and the last season and last season so he was always there for French national team and with all the seasons he it got a little bit into his uh, rhythm so I think when he started to find his flow Minnesota found his as well so Ant became an all-star because he was really the focal point and Rudy did his thing but I think where we all agree uh, or at least I would say most of us agree in France is that um I was really surprised when there was a press conference last year when he got introduced and they were like, oh, we're going to fit him the ball a little bit more on offense than he was in Utah. And I got I got scared because I love Rudy to death. He's an incredible defender, but that ball is a hot potato. Like it, it usually is. And that's not against him. It's just that he isn't as skilled. <laughs> no, it's against him. It's against them. It's cool. It's against it's, them. It's all right. It's a little bit of shade, but it's because we, we talked about this before and we're like, I'm not mad against players who want to develop their skills, right? But when you have on uh, Anthony Edwards and Mike Conley and all them boys and Colin Tony Towns, you don't get the ball in the post. I'm sorry. No. Nope. You you get you could be a you could be a really, really good Dikembe or I don't care, Bill Russell or anything, but just leave the whole offensive point alone. Be the best teammate and rim protector and defender you can be. And I I guess it's not enough for him. So we'll see later on. But I, um, I wouldn't mind if he's just getting relaxed the whole summer because physically he looks absolutely gassed at the end of the season. Yeah. What do you, what do you guys think? <laughs> I mean, he, it wasn't a good year. Point blank. It just was not a good season for him there. It didn't it's work. It's a bad fit. It's just a yeah, bad I just don't think it's a, I, I just don't think him and Carl Anthony Towns are a good fit. You know, I just... For for a cat to be at his best, he has to be kind of a inside outside player. He has to do both. Like you yeah. can't like he can make the three, he can shoot the three. That's fine. But he's got a good post game. You know what I mean? And his post game is better than Rudy's post game. So like, why wouldn't you utilize that if if you got it? So I just don't think it's a good fit. You need a I think a floor space or a real spacing for who's going to take a ton of threes and be a like the guy that that's in Houston that they drafted Smith would be, I think ideal with Rudy, a guy that's going to shoot a lot of threes and that's what he does. And he's good at it, you know, um, and, and keep that floor spacing more pristine. I just don't think he and cat work together. Now they fit, they found some workarounds that, that sort of did okay for parts of the season. But if you're trying to win something, I don't know that that group is going to work together. And plus, Ant's got to have the ball so much, you know? You you think Towns is a five? I mean, he's like five-ish, right? Like, you don't want to make – I mean, Marcus, jump in any time. I just don't think – like, you don't want to make a living with him in the hole. You know, like, that's not – he's great facing up and shooting, so you want to take advantage of that too. Like he's a stretch five. Does that make sense? I think he's a stretch five. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's his... I would call him a stretch five. The problem is, if if you put him at four, I mean, there's only a very particular five that can be next to him, right? Like you can't, like it really limits the options. At least if he's five, you can spread the floor, you can run it. Like that might be their best option. But it just it doesn't fit with 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 the five. They need to be interchangeable. Like if if he's four, like 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 you said, Da, you need somebody who can go out when he's in and in when he's out. Right. But when he's in posting, like Rudy's like, yo, you're my you're my backyard, man. What you doing? And you know, I feel like Rudy. I agree with you one thousand percent. By the way, he just needs to get out of his head this idea of giving me the ball. Like it's not like just stop it. Right, it's over. Nobody's posting you up. Nobody's dumping you. Don't get mad. Don't don't get your feelings about it. Just go get 
Go get some rebounds. If he played that way, I got a perfect spot for him. The place that needs him desperately. You go play with Steph and Clay. You are Golden <laughs> as long as you State the ball. Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they need to represent her badly. Oh, he was fantastic. But, like, but he ain't getting the rock. Like, nobody's dumping the ball on us. <laughs> you know, you, uh, you know, Bastion, you know who I want to ask you about? Where's my guy, TLC? Uh, he didn't play much in Atlanta. Is he going to be on the French national team? Uh, the Wawu Cabarro? Oh, TLC. Uh, but maybe, maybe he was there because he's good at stretching and defending. He was there in the, I think, in the uh, Olympic finals. Friends team USA. I think he's a starter, or he was probably a backup, but he was there. He's good. He's good. He's he. he I was, like him, man. I, I'm he was okay. He, he was getting more active in the NBA. Yeah, he came back to Europe. I think it was a good move. Um, when you see that Frank Nikina, for example, stayed and stayed. I think the right move was for TLC to come back home. Um, yeah, he's good. Just like Gershon Yabuzele, he found his spot with Madrid. He was really good. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I hope TLC is going to be there. We don't have a whole lot of three and Ds in France. Uh, we have a lot inside, <laughs> and um, we we just wish that that TLC is going to be there. But uh, but yeah, I, I, I'll keep you guys updated. I think it's going to be set up in the middle of like July. We'll see some more. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I think, I mean, you tell me, it seems to me like the, the, it's a, it's already taken off in France and what, whether women Yama plays ultimately any will, I'm sure at some point, but the, the growth of the game in France in the last, geez, last five years, forget the last 10, it's just astronomical. Like it's, it's exponential. Like it just seems like it's really taken off. And I know Mbappe is Mbappe. I'm not comparing anything to Mbappe. Believe me. But is basketball like a solid number two now in France? I wouldn't say number two because I I, I wish we could say that. Uh, I think France is still entrenched in some sports that are really like uh, deep core in their values because basketball is still an American sport. So mm, okay. even if it's developed, the best league is from one to seven in the morning. So it's kind of difficult to get all that hype. Uh, a lot of you're absolutely correct on the fact that it just boomed and exploded in the last few years. So many effects because. We had what we called the, the I, I call this the the four wave. We had like Bean Sports, who was the official broadcaster of the NBA, that came back in 2012, and so we had a real show and real TV show to to show the NBA. Uh, NBA 2K absolutely killed it. Uh, the best video game in Europe, I don't know in the US, but the best sports video game for a whole decade it's, was a basketball game. It's number one in the world. It's the number it's one video game, game in the world. Yeah, sports video game. Yeah. Then we had like yeah some some national team results and and then you had some some Curry effect on this on the Westbrook effect on this. I think as long as it's an American sport, it's going to be tough. I always say sorry, f it, because we we have to watch the games from one to seven. But I I think it's so you got soccer, then you got rugby. So it's like not the American football. We got this. Right, I think right. it's a second. Okay. And then and then it depends. I think in collective basketball, it's it's yeah. It, it's third, I would say, second or third. But um, it's on the come up because maybe in like, I don't know, I, I think 2024 is going to be too soon, but we had a debate about the, who's going to hold the flag for the Olympics. Uh, you know, it's a huge responsibility. So we, we thought maybe it was going to be someone, maybe for us, it's probably going to be Teddy Riner, who's like doing judo. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, but maybe in a few years it's gonna be Wembenyama, and that's how you get more recognition and more everything. But we are waiting for uh, for our moment for the national team. We haven't had like a big world championship or Olympic medal, like a huge gold medal. When that happens, yeah, it's gonna really explode. But as of right now, it's it's on the come up. It's on the come up for sure. Hey, don't sleep on Dominique Malanga. Let's go. <laughs> Sixteen year old woman star. Wow. You 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 you're dropping names. But the 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 thing is Wemby is good, but we're gonna have probably one or two uh, years, maybe with not guys that hype, but watch out for the 2027, 28. Uh, them boys are really good. And these are the sons of old uh, basketball players. So there are some names that are gonna come back. They're gonna be like, oh. I remember they played in 2000 in Sydney against the U.S. So that's that's going to be like this. Right. I had I had a question for y'all though. Um, yep. Do you 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 you've covered a whole lot of lotteries. 
Do you remember a moment where, for you guys, really it comes to your mind where the lottery was, uh, everyone was waiting to see who was number one? What was the what was the last time for for you guys? LeBron, Zion Williams. Oh, Zion. That, yes, Zion was the last one. Zion, you're right. You're right. Zion was the last. One. Was it was it really that big in the U.S. for Zion? Because I oh, know yeah. friends were like, "Oh, the hype is real," but uh, there are some really good dudes behind him. No, because they because he was pushed so hard by ESPN that he, and <laughs> he was a high school phenom. Yeah, that's yes, the thing. Yeah, like yeah, a viral yeah. sensation. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. Then he I was I was at AD though. I, I think Anthony Davis was pretty big, or was not it was big, big, but not like that. Not like not Zion. like that. Yeah, not like Zion. Level. Not like LeBron. I mean, LeBron was just you know. Yeah, I've told that story many times about LeBron was when he was 15 was was people would have taken him number one. You know what I mean? When he was a sophomore in high school, like so LeBron to me was in my time, the all time hype when Shaq was big in 92. That was big, big. Um, but nothing like I think Zion and nothing like LeBron. This is the by far the biggest since then. Um, people are. Yeah. Well, uh, you just people just can't believe when they see when they get the highlights that they show a Victor just doing crazy shit. Like he, <laughs> I saw one, I saw one today, Marcus, where he took the he was on the wing. He is about 14 feet from the wing, and he takes two dribbles between his legs and he spins, and he dunks it. <laughs> he covered that much ground, <laughs> like he covers 14 feet of ground in one step. <laughs> And dunks on dude. What's unbelievable? Like, <laughs> never seen anything like this guy ever. I'm trying to ever. think of who were the bigger. High oh, you know who was hyped like this, Bastion? When I think about it, you know who was big like with uh, me? Anthony Bennett. Remember when he went number one out of you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, my bad. I'm sick. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's that's low. When, hey, when yo, he he leaned in and everything. When but when Ooh. when Bargnani went number one. <laughs> nah, yeah, I think the the hype the hype really. Um, we I don't know if it's like this, and uh, I I don't know if it's a social thing with the U.S. against friends or between friends and the U.S. But there is sometimes that moment where you have someone that's really hyped, and at some point, because the media is doing too much, people are getting. scared scared that maybe the hype is too much do you guys have this as well or is it more like an american way of nah he's good he's hype let's go i mean i think with with the haters now, come out right yeah. yeah yeah sure 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 there's people that hate stuff you know what i mean it's, you know what i mean like yeah you're like what is why do you hate somebody who's as good as his job as steph curry is like that makes no sense to me like but yeah there'll be some of that but i think most people feel like Plug and play, man. We'll figure out the position. I think we'll it'll show out. up. What I you... think it'll show up, like you said, when like he has a rough game. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, yo, he's 19. You know what I'm saying? Like that's when it'll be like, yeah. that's when the talk ahead will be like, I told you he was overrated. No, like, right. Like that's to me, that's when the hype will backfire most. Like if he goes out and he's like three for 12 in his first game. Which would be the most natural thing of all time, considering <laughs> what's what gone into it, right? People, I think that's where he'll experience it most. More than now, it's like, I mean, the w, the NBA is promoting him, <laughs> like he has his own channel on League Pass. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's I all saw that he was a, he was the top 10 most uh, most viewed guy on the social networks yeah. without playing one second in the NBA this year. That's that's crazy. Yeah. No, they, this is this is legit, man. I've never seen anything like this in quite a while where people are just so hyped for a guy because he's just doing stuff that we haven't seen a guy his size ever do, ever. What I what I really hope for you guys is to be to have a good seat the first time you guys are going to see him because I haven't seen as many players that you get as you guys had. And DA, you've you've seen you know, so many players from up close and interviewed them on the on the court and everything. But I've seen some guys play. I'll I'll, I'll remember the first time. I'll tell Mike is the first time I saw that guy because this this was more than basketball. You were more like, is this guy from our? Is he from our species? Like, is, 
easy easy like us that's that's the that's the biggest moment i think uh you you, you guys are going to seem like early on oh yeah, yeah, yeah no. I mean, we'll be there opening night we'll be i oh, mean yeah. i plan to that's be at his first game LeBron. right <laughs> that's how i felt with bron like that dude yeah like seeing him up close it just felt like Yo, why is he so fast? This doesn't make any sense. Exactly. This is fake. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is this is AI. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, exactly. That's what it felt like. Like, come on, man. He's huge. And then he's like running so fast. It's like unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Up close. You gotta be up close to to really get the sense and of how big Marcus, and fast I don't he even is. remember what LeBron did in his first game. It was in Sac- Sacramento. Oh, I remember that. Sacramento. I, yeah. I was there. I don't think he had like a particularly great game. It was like, nobody yeah, like 20. Yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. cared. <laughs> like, you know yeah, what you, I mean? like, you had your typical 25, 7, and 7 from LeBron. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you everybody was saying? like, yeah. like work. You was, feel me? Yeah, he's that good. <laughs> he's that good. So, man, look, this is going to be unbelievable. We can't wait. Tonight is, as I said, somebody's life is going to change tonight. Somebody's life is going to change tonight. That's not Victor's life is about to change. Shoot, yeah, and you all that time in San Antonio. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you said it, DA, on your tweets. I think it's pro. It's it's not one life. It's so many lives. because Lives, exactly. Because I, I think to give you an, an idea, uh, there are some um, – finance and economics magazines who are trying to as well interview me and us yeah. because all this how much impact is he going to have on the financial standpoint of a franchise like all those numbers that pop up about yes. like he's going to put the growth like times sure. three or sure. yeah this is this is something i i just I, I've uh, I don't really pray, but when I do, I hope that he's he's gonna be like really uh, he's not gonna have any issues physically because as long as he's on the floor, I told you, DA, I told you, Marcus, he can decide whether he can be like an absolute uh, game lead changer defensively, and he can do the same on offense. So just the rest is in his hands. You know what? You know what? Who this? You know who he reminds me of? I've been thinking about this. Maybe he's basketball's Shohei Otani. Maybe that's who he is. So enlighten me because I don't know who the hell this is. Okay, so Shohei Otani plays for the, the, for the Angels. Ball player of all time. Yeah. So this dude <laughs> mashes. He hits. He hits the ball 400, 500 feet, and he pitches. <laughs> and he, so he's the best hitter in the league. And he's one of the two or three best pitchers in the league. Like we've right. never seen this before. Yeah. Like he's he can literally do everything. And most guys have to choose when they come to the major leagues. You have to choose whether you're going to be a great pitcher or you're going to be a great hitter. You don't get to do both. He's doing both. <laughs> he's just like, F it. I'm just going to do both. I'm that good. And I give me the ball and I strike 12 guys out. And then I hit three bombs every night. That's what he does. You know, so I think. That to me is maybe where Wembenyama's comp is. Like, like you mentioned, he can dominate both ends of the floor, and there's very few guys that really dominate both ends of the floor. And if he can do that, then that's to me that's who he. Is. Maybe he's Otani. He's just a. He's man, just forget a t- him. I care about Bash's life. I mean, look, you <laughs> blow up, but man. He gonna be good. He gonna, he gonna yeah, sign a yeah, hundred right, million dollar right. deal. We want he gonna the be best result for you. And all kind of that's stuff right. for sign. I want you to win. Let's go. <laughs> this is your time. You feel me? You get the draft lottery tonight. Let's go. Your life about the time. I want to see a book and everything. Right? All that. Give me all that. Oh, we got we got everything covered, man. We it's I mean it's good for us. You you always look for for, for some tornado in your wherever you 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 work in whatever field you work in, you are expecting and wishing that there is some kind of tornado like this. We 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 saw it with Tony Parker, who was really good, but. It wasn't that hype. It wasn't that that big. Um, we we know that there is a corner, uh, but it's a double corner because of the Olympics. Because we know that when something happens with national team, it just explodes. So, I mean, I'm just crossing my fingers, Marcus. I, I hope it's gonna just just turn everything into into gold. But I'm I'm already really uh, feeling blessed and glad to to cover an athlete like this because you you wish once in your life to be in a country where basketball is growing. And as soon as I like, I'm in my thirties, so I'm in the right prime to just cover this guy, having the energy to just stay up nights and go there back and forth, follow his path and 
there there are going to be some some young kids following this guy and just becoming great basketball players and going to be like yeah i i i decided to become a basketball player because of this dude so yeah yeah fingers crossed man it's going to be great i can't wait for this tonight i just can't wait to see what happens it's trash talk.co on twitter it's trash talk underscore fr my man yeah. bastard our man bastard man thank you for joining us bro Heem. thank you bro and, appreciate yes. it thank you so and much I hope uh, it works out well it, with you. absolutely now y'all leave that five-star review on apple spotify google play wherever you get this fine american podcast marcus thank you for toughing it out today my brother if they can't leave five stars what they need to do keep it to yourself you haters we're gonna make you have to guard women yama <laughs> <laughs> All over the post, oh, everywhere, <laughs> 94 feet. If, if he <laughs> scores, you die. <laughs>